It is December 1st, 2022, and this is the Calvary Briefing. Thank you so much for watching today. For the next few weeks, the briefing is going to look slightly different in that for these weeks, we will be looking at three Christmas carols, and we'll be looking at what these carols are saying and what they mean to us. Now, these carols are actually going to be sung here at Calvary Church by an Advent choir on December 18th, and I also want to urge you to be a part of this Advent choir. We would enjoy having families, uh, children, young adults, middle-aged adults, older adults, grandmothers and grandfathers and grandchildren we would love to have a family Advent Choir for the 18th of December. And the first carol that we're going to look at is, O Come All Ye Faithful. And the words are very familiar to us. O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come. Let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. As we look at the background of this hymn, this Christmas carol, it is significant to know that this hymn was actually a collaboration on the part of several people. What we sing is a 19th century version, in other words, from the 1800s, of a 17th century hymn. And as we sing this song, many of us are not aware of the fact that the song was first written in Latin. And the Latin form of O Come, Let Us Adore Him was actually found in the 1700s in a now defunct college in the north of France. Historians and researchers have discovered that it was probably written by a man by the name of John Francis Wade, and their best efforts have indicated that the manuscript that we attribute to this hymn is from 1743. Now, we sing the hymn not in Latin, but in English. And the English translations of verses 1, 2, 3, and 6 come from a man by the name of Frederick Oakley. And he did a lot of translating of Latin hymns into English in the 1800s. He was alive from 1802 until about 1880. Oakley was a part of a religious movement in Great Britain known as the Oxford Movement, and he worked with another famous individual by the name of John Henry Newman, who worked out of Westminster Abbey with the very poor of London during those years. And Oakley's translation of O Come, Let Us Adore Him first appeared in print in 1852. And so, the first manuscript was 1743. The second printing of this hymn in English was in 1852. So far, that's two people who were a part of the collaboration of this hymn. There's yet one more person that we know of involved. And this person's name was Abbe Etienne Jean-Francis Borderet. And he was from France, and yet he translated hymns from, again, Latin to English, and he translated stanzas, verses 4 and 5 of O Come, Let Us Adore Him. What draws us to this Christmas carol, and what is very unique about this Christmas carol, is the fact that it is an invitation the invitation is to come to Bethlehem and visit the night of Jesus' birth. The hymn takes us from just thinking about facts to actually practicing to, to live in the light of these true facts. The 
Kim looks at the event of Jesus' birth as being so real and the biblical description as being so clear that you can actually visit that night and know what it was like. The biblical foundation of this hymn is from Luke chapter 2, verse 15. We know that after angels announced the birth of Jesus on the hillside to shepherds, that these shepherds said, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Studying this hymn is incredibly interesting to see that it comes to us not from just one person, but there was a collaboration. But we find as we study the hymn that not only was there a collaboration with these three people, but the background and the foundation of this hymn actually goes back not 100, 200, or 300 years, but actually 1,700, maybe 1,800 years ago. As you look at the second verse of O Come All Ye Faithful, the original version reads like this. True God of true God, light from light eternal. Lo, he shuns not the virgin's womb, son of the Father, begotten, not created. Now, this paraphrases very nicely an ancient creed. The Nicene Creed, which is from the year 325. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten and not made. Of one being with the Father, through Him all things made. When we sing this hymn, we are linking ourselves with other believers who span most of the last 2,000 years. Amazing. Amazing. Many hymns that we sing today with links to the past only have verses, or only have a few verses that we sing. Uh, a hymn that you're probably familiar with, that you've heard of at least, is Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, written by Charles Wesley in the 1700s. We sing maybe two, three, at most four verses. There are actually 16 verses of this hymn. And there are many verses of O Come All Ye Faithful. I can only remember singing the fifth official verse of O Come All Ye Faithful once or twice in my life. Uh, listen to these words of the fifth verse. Child for us sinners, poor and in the manger, fain we embrace thee with awe and love. Who would not love thee, loving us so dearly? Professor Charles Hahn writes about the experience of hearing and singing these words. And he writes, The rhetorical question leaves us almost unable to sing the refrain aloud. Who would not love thee, loving us so dearly? Well, may the refrain of O come all ye faithful be in your mind throughout this Advent season. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. 